welcome to another episode of Tech Talk Travel. I've got a wonderful guest with me today, Mr. Moritz Klussman from Customer Alliance. Moritz, it's great to have you here. Thanks for joining us. Well, thanks for having me. Moritz, let's start by perhaps your background, like we do with every other uh, mm -hmm. person that we have on the show. Uh, talk to us a little bit about your, your background from um, humble beginnings uh, okay. to where you are today and what was your motivation to um, start a company like Customer Alliance? Yeah, sure. So we started already like 10 years ago, so yeah. a lot, long time. We still consider us a startup, but many people say we are not anymore. And back then I was still in university and I actually wanted to go into banking. And then uh, by coincidence I met Torsten again. He's uh, like my co-founder and uh, we knew each other from high school and Torsten, he uh, had all this hotel background, like studied hotel management, did hotel apprenticeship and I myself, I had not only banking but also IT background and when we just sat together and said, hey, let's do something in the hospitality space and that's basically how we started. So it was not really a strategic decision, it was more like, let's try it out, right? right, right. So and, um, then we just started and remember that we had like 5,000 euros for the first year, so we were like, ah, should we buy, um, should we print business cards or not, should we not do it? And then over the years we became more and more professional, uh, I would say, and now like 10 years after we are um, 95 employees here in Berlin. Yeah, fantastic. And overall, how many customers? And customers, we have around 7,000 customers. Fantastic. Yeah. But they're not all hotel customers, right? Because you, you do focus on other disciplines as well. Yes, so, yeah. so we, we, we come from the hotel industry. Yeah. So a big chunk of our customers are hotel customers, but we are now also expanding into our other verticals. So we have a lot of big automotive customers working with us, managing their dealerships across mm. Europe with us. Right. And uh, I find that really interesting because really you get like from every in industry you get different insights on how they work with their customers and then you can combine it and, yeah. and give different yeah. inspirations to those other customers sure. as well. Do you see some um, major focuses or areas that really do stand out to you that are quite different between industries where things are done a little differently? Is that, are yes. there any areas so that really I, I would. So in my point of view, so in the hotel industry they focus a lot about, you know, in our case, like on the reviews out there. So how many reviews on Google, Facebook, TripAdvisor. So they really care about their reputation out there. Whereas, for example, we mentioned the automotive industry. When you look at those clients, they really focus on a bit more, I would say, on the customer experience. So, for example, the clients we have, they have such sophisticated uh, business workflows on how to follow up with unsatisfied customers, for example. Mm. And that is something that we are now transferring to our hotel industry customers as well. And they say, hey, why don't you do like a workflow such as this? And it's really benefiting mm. versus where we say it like to, to other customers from, uh, from automotive industry, for example, we tell them, hey, um, look, check out your Google reviews and do something about it. So yeah. uh, we really like that, how those different industries interact with, with each other. Yeah. Now, in terms of global footprint, You've got overall 7,000 customers, but whereabouts are they? Are they specifically in Europe or do, do you reach out into Asia and the Americas as well? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Mainly Europe. I mean, we coincidentally have some customers in, in Asia and, and, and the US, but what we really want to be is like a European player, mm -hmm. right? So our main markets are the Dach, the German-speaking countries, followed by Spain and Italy and um, France and Poland. Okay. Yeah. okay. Now, 10 years ago, you started the company. Yeah. Um, over that time, I'm sure you've probably been faced with many different challenges and, mm -hmm. and obstacles that you've had to work around or get, get through. What, what are some of the key ones that, as a company starting out in, in the space, would you say were the biggest challenges for you and how did you get around them? What were your ways of resolving them? So I think from a business perspective, obviously in the beginning it was learning how to run a company. You know, back then we were like 24 years old, didn't have a clue, it never worked actually before, only at the university. Mm. So how to run a company and then um, basically the more, more we grew, it was also how to make sure not to run out of money, right? So I remember Torsten and I, we had many nights where we were not sure how to pay salaries the month after, so um, that was a big thing well, um, that occupied us back then. And, now I think what's really interesting is that we are, what we did maybe like a year or two ago is we basically changed from a pure online reputation manager more to um, a guest experience management solution. Mm. So not only managing the last point of um, a customer touchpoint after departure, but also managing the communication pre and during stay. Mm. 
And that was really interesting involvement for us because we were in a, luckily in a comfortable situation, right? We have and still have like a big part of our business that is highly profitable and working well and customers are satisfied. But we said, okay, we feel like industry is changing a bit more and we, we want to we want to evolve a bit more on the product side. Yeah. So that was really interesting to, to yeah, good. extend the product. Yeah. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about that customer yeah. journey because a lot of hotels kind of miss that opportunity. Mm -hmm. And I think it's um, a lot of people are talking about it. A lot of people are aware of it. What do you think hotels really need to focus on when it comes to, to booking process, to pre-stay, to stay, and then to the departure? So we always say we want to empower businesses to provide an outstanding and effortless guest experience. And I think the word effortless is really important here, right? So what I mean by that is that, as you said, not only they get the right information at the right time, but also I feel like a great guest experience if it's, is if it's really effortless to interact with the hotel. So to submit your information, to prepare your check-in, or to submit a guest request when you're in there, or also really effortless to get a high quality answer from the, from, from the hotel. And what I mean by that is that um, that I think what, if from a hotel perspective, it's most important to really think as a guest point of view. And when I look at the industry, I think a lot of people are still looking at those, let's call it older systems, and it's more like from an operational point of view, but not really about the guest experience, right? And then once you make sure that it's effortless, you provide like really nice information, then you can also differentiate between business and leisure travelers um, even more, mm -hmm. right? And um, I would even argue, yes, there are a couple of main differences like business and leisure, but overall it's not like you have to build like 10 different customer mm -hmm. or guest journeys, right? Mm -hmm. I would argue like two or three guest journeys, depending on different types, are more than enough. Mm. Okay, let's talk a little bit about technologies now. Obviously, yeah. voice and chatbots are becoming quite prevalent now in, yeah. in general technology. Um, what's Customer Alliance's approach towards voice and chatbots, and, and what are you doing, if anything, to integrate those services into your platform? I don't think voice and chatbots are effortless. Um, when I look at the existing solutions out there, and let's be a bit more generic, right? Yeah. So I would so I would argue Amazon Alexa is probably the best thing out there, right? But is it really easy to interact with Amazon Alexa, right? I, I mean, to be honest, I don't have one. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you have at home? Nothing. I don't yeah. use them. Yeah. yeah. Well, I have an Amazon Alexa at home, mm -hmm. and it's it works in specific use cases, as you know, right? Play this radio station or put a timer to eight minutes because I'm cooking, right? But if you ask like a generic question, it doesn't work, right? right? And what, I'm, what I mean is that if you now put Amazon Alexa into like a hotel room or wherever in the journey, it's not, not easy to get the right information for you, right? Because most likely it will not really understand you. Like chatbots, for example, they work perfectly if you, you're on the website and you want to book a hotel in that scenario, they work, mm -hmm. right? If you have a generic question, they most likely don't work. Mm -hmm. So I feel like, yes, it will be important, but not there yet. And what I do like, though, is the approach from Intercom. So um, Intercom is like a more generic software company. And I, the approach that they do with the chatbots is they don't pretend to be human. So you ask a question, and then the bot answers and says, hey, um, sorry, no humans at the moment available, but here are like three different answers on what might help you. Did that help? Yes or no? So I like it because they don't try to pretend to be human and that really helps a lot, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Yeah. But to answer overall, right now I don't feel like voice and chat right now is effortless. Right, so. right. Maybe you, in a year or two. Okay, yeah. I was about to say then, how, what, what type of time frame would you, or do you think that it may be at that point? I don't know, let's see, I'm just yeah. gonna... So for me, right, I always try to, to watch a bit more, not, not only in the hospitality niche, but a bit sure. more industry agnostic, because mm. I think there's a lot of really good technology that is not in the hotel industry. Mm. And um, basically what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna, we're gonna watch that, keep on watching that, and once it's really good with Amazon Alexa, then we will integrate it. Okay. Know, right? Yeah, good. All right, now obviously you also deal with hoteliers, yeah. uh, yourself day to day. Yeah. In your opinion, what type of behavior makes a modern 
hotelier today a smart hotelier? What, what are some of the things that smart hoteliers are doing with their business and how are they applying technology into their business that, that makes you go, that's clever? Automating workflows. Mm -hmm. Like when I look at hoteliers, I see that there's a lot of manual processes that can easily be, be automated. Could you right? give us some examples? I was on a trip in the US uh, yeah. with my family yeah. and then we booked like a really nice hotel, I think it was 35 rooms. And this guy asked me, like, Manly, when's your arrival time? And I replied by email, hey, my arrival time's at 4 p.m. And that's like such an easy example on, on a thing you could automate, right? Just automate that message and then you will easily save like one minute per guest every day, mm -hmm. right? So, mm -hmm. and I, I see a lot of, a lot of examples like that in, in, in hotels, right? Or like what we spoke about earlier automate the process of re, you know like of the business workflow to to reply to unsatisfied customers right so i see a lot of hotels just looking through their reviews through their feedbacks and saying ah there's a negative review here there's a negative negative guest feedback here maybe i reply tomorrow maybe somebody already did it but why don't you automate that and have a specific workflow so that you make sure that you react within I don't know, like 48 hours or yeah. whatever your yeah. workflow is there, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I think there's a lot of examples there. And, but I also see that changing quite a lot now that interfaces are, are more open. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, which is a good thing. <laughs> oh, definitely. Yeah. 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 I, th I think the interface uh, uh, problem will be solved soon. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> I always wonder how long it will take until those legacy systems are replaced by, by, by new ones, right? I don't think you're the only one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it will be quite interesting. It will be. Inter inter yeah. interesting to watch. I think also a lot of existing players will change, right? And like, I don't even mean Oracle, right? But um, there are some players there that have like a really high customer satisfaction, mm -hmm. but I hear more and more voices now that they are, people are get, losing trust because they still have to pay so much for interfaces, right? right? Yeah. So I think just from a business perspective, it needs to change, right? If I was the CEO of such a company, I mean, that would be a big danger sign saying, hey, customers are getting um, dissatisfied because of interface prices. So I believe that will mm. change a lot. And then also with players such as Impala, um, um, things will be so much easier. Mm. What, I, what I will, I'm also really curious to see is like more like, um, for example, industry agnostic CRM systems, how they will, um, be used, right? And I now see, for example, I hear more and more big hotel chains thinking or implementing Salesforce, for example. Yeah, yeah. And that will be really interesting because um, that has a big implication because not only APIs will be free, but also what is happening to to existing solutions that are now being replaced by, mm. in this case, Salesforce. Mm. Right? Mm. Currently, when I speak to hotel chains, most of them, they're not paying for interfaces right. because they have such a big deal, say, so the vendor just says, oh, I give it to you for free. Yeah. The small ones, they are paying yeah. for, for the interfaces, yeah. right? Yeah. And I mean, for the small ones, it will be interesting to see how fast they change because a big one, you can, I would actually argue, you can change faster, but the small ones um, will change a lot. Um, um, it's a bit more difficult because there's a big market barrier in the sales process, actually. Right. So for like a new player, PMS player to, uh, to approach all the big chains, that's, I mean, still a big, a difficult job, but it's really hard if you want to go for the independence hotels and one by one try to make them switch their system. Yeah, yeah. So that is why a lot of those systems will stay for a long time. Sure, sure. But I think also the, the other factors that make it hard, there are other factors. It's not just that with the independence and the longer, the long term. For example, um, cost, time, trust. There's, there's, there's a Trust few different a things. One, yeah. Trust is a big one. Um, so it's an interesting dynamic. Oh that's yeah, for sure. Again. And, and I, I totally feel the pain, right? I'm sure so you for example, do. That's why. Like I'm in, in our, in, in, in our case, right? Yeah. So just thinking from our company case, it's like um, switching our CRM system. That's mm. that's huge, right? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Not that's sure if I really want to do that. No, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. It's not dissimilar to changing a PMS. Yeah. I mean, changing a PMS yeah. is a big deal. Yeah. Okay. Great. Also, just another one in relation to online, the online reputation world. Mm. Um, what components do you feel are making the most progress and have the most potential in that at the moment? One part would be like automating workflows. That I definitely feel um, um, what we spoke about yeah. earlier. And then also to come back to an example we had earlier, it's like I feel like 
the biggest impact you have on your on your reputation out there is that you proactively address the issues that they are in there right? with the pre-sale message that's actually a quick fix to set the expectations at the beginning and will lead to to better reviews after the stay. Mm -hmm. So I really believe the biggest influence on or like the biggest change in online reputation management is really combining like the post analysis with expectation management at the beginning of the journey okay. that I really believe in. Do you think that there's any gap in today's technology offering for hotels overall? And if so, where are those gaps? What's from your, again, your experience when mm -hmm. you're coming in with your products, do you generally see uh, there's a real gap there, doesn't fall under our area, so I can't really do much about it, but I can see it. Do you, just general experience, do you see where there may be gaps in technology today? It's interesting, right? So, um, I mean, we talked about a couple of examples before, but maybe to, not to answer your question, but to step a, a step a step back sure. and to look at what, what is happening. So there are a couple of things that I always try to watch, like in general, when I look at software, and particularly in our case, obviously, hospitality software is like, and one part is definitely what will happen to, to um, players that are just scraping public available data. Yeah. In our case, it was like, you know, showing reviews on booking, TripAdvisor, etc. Um, I mean, there's value in that, but I believe that value from showing public available information will be commoditized. So what I'm trying to say is that it will be really interesting to see how those players that today are purely relying on showing public data, how mm -hmm. they will be evolve in, in five years. Mm -hmm. and, and my answer is, um, this is not a valid business case in five years mm -hmm. time, right? Then I also see, especially in the hotel industry, there are like, with, you know, we spoke about guest experience and uh, guest journey and like looking at the guest journey, there's so many different niche players in the hotel guest journey, right? There's players like upselling solutions, there's player like in-house solutions, there's player like post, uh, pro, exactly. that only do like post like communications, yeah. then there's different systems and I believe that this fragmented market that will not stay that way. I mean, there, there has to be some consolidation across the, the communication journey. And I think that will also be quite interesting to see what's happening there, how those different niche players connect or are even merged with other yeah. software. Yeah, yeah. So, so those are like different trends that I'm, I'm always watching. Yeah, it yeah. certainly is dynamic. Yeah. It's extremely dynamic. And, and the other one that we spoke about earlier is to really see what is happening with those non-hotel tech players, how they are coming into the industry. Yeah. So I know we spoke about Intercom, they are now trying to build up a hotel team. That will be really interesting for all those yeah. chatbots out there. Um, you know, like um, this morning I had a discussion um, with one of our team members and we were talking about newsletter systems, right? And yes, there are some specialized hotel newsletter systems, right? But it will be really interesting to see how they will compete in the future with MailChimp, right? So um, there's software world, there's always different pressures from different angles. So I, uh, it's really interesting to see yeah. that. And obviously I always try to watch it to, to, to make sure that we don't fall behind. Right? Yeah, sure. Before we started the interview, you mentioned to me that you've just returned from a six week break in yeah. the US with your family. Um, what were your, when you typically book your travel, how do you do it? Obviously you do business travel and you travel mm -hmm. with the family, the, with your young children. How do you go about the two? What, what, what's different in your booking process and what are you looking for as a, as a, um, a traveler? Interesting question. So for business travel, it's like, I just want to have like a, a decent hotel near the location, mm -hmm. right? And it needs to be really easy, easy to book, right? And obviously, I always try to book direct, but sometimes when it's too hard, I, to be honest, I book on booking.com um, if it's too complicated to book direct. And in the, in the States, when we, we were there, then, um, then, you know, like with my two kids, three and five years old, I, I was really looking for a swimming pool, like a nice kids area, etc. Right? So for me, it was really important to see how, how other people see those areas, uh, areas in there, right? And also, I always want to have this more like a unique feeling as everybody, every guest wants to have. And I found that really interesting because I booked this unique boutique hotel, I thought, 
uh, I thought it was a hotel. It was like really awesome. And you know where, where I ended up? I ended up in a resort from Nido. And Nido is like a, like a brand from Airbnb, actually. Ah. And it's like, a big, it's like a big, massive hotel yes. with different yes. apartments yes, in right. there. That's their and first, uh, their, I think their bricks and mortar approach. Yeah. yeah, and it yeah. was amazing because yeah. I was thinking I have this nice boutique, you know, like individual experience, but then I ended up in that place. And um, I, f I found that really interesting. Right. Uh, to see Were what's you happening. a little disappointed with that, or what was your initial re reaction to that? No, I was really curious about it because I had the feeling, hey, uh, now this is like new. And then I looked afterwards, I looked it up on obviously on the website, etc., and there's basically just two or three of those results currently. And yeah. I find that really interesting to yeah. see. Yeah. How, how in this case Airbnb is now going so much deeper in the value chain and you know building yeah. their own yeah. their own uh, yeah. brand. Yeah. And well, that, that, it's funny you mention that because they were actually pilot or, or test sites that Airbnb has started. I think there's a couple of them yeah. in Florida as well, yeah. which is where you were. So that's very interesting, and it makes a very clear statement as well. Uh, from Airbnb about what their directions are, even though they haven't been shy about that history. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. It's very interesting. Yeah, yeah, very good. Okay, Moritz, listen, thank you so much. It's been great to have you on the thank show. Thank you. Um, really appreciate you taking the Thanks. time and talking with us. Um, and guys, as well, thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed that. And make sure you hit subscribe, the bell button, as well for the notifications. Um, also, make sure you come to our new website and subscribe to us there for all of this great content, as well as download our apps for Android and iOS. So until next time, it's bye for now and bye for now. <laughs> bye bye.